This video is on the form of Arianism of Mormonism. Um, Arianism is a historical heresy that denies the deity of Christ or of the Son. Um, it remains to this day a prominent heresy and really two of the most popular forms of it in American culture are uh, the Watchtower Bible uh, and Tract Society and the Church of Jesus Christ of the Latter-day Saints. There's also some of the Seventh-day Adventists, there's Christian science, scientists under Mary Baker Eddy, um, Ellen G. White is the prophetess of um, uh, the Seventh-day Adventists. Uh, I may do videos on those other two, uh, but this one is important. Um, the This um, video contains um, what I wrote up for a senior pastor who had asked me to help with a young Christian who was encountering um, Christian missionaries. And what I wanted to deal with would be what was the most obvious, paramount, and simple thing to deal with in um, dealing with uh, Mormons and what most of the public doesn't realize about them. Uh, when you have Mormon missionaries with you, when you're speaking with them, there's an elephant in the room with you, but they will not do anything to expose that to you. But they also will not um, dodge dealing with it if you bring up the issue. Uh, Mormonism, in, in its when it originated, did everything it could to differentiate itself from historical Christianity. But now, it does many campaigns and works very hard to blend the line between itself and historical Christianity. It's kind of deceptive. But the most important and obvious thing about Mormonism for the public to be aware of is that Mormonism is polytheistic. Judaism and Christianity are monotheistic, and since Mormonism is polytheistic, it therefore cannot be Christian. Um, monotheism is the belief in a single deity. Polytheism is the belief in uh, multiple deities. There's also, you know, duotheistic. Um, I would say probably polytheism falls under two or more deities. Um, to show this, what I've done is I've composed this of um, public published literature from Mormon from Mormonism that can be found in their churches or in their literature now. Uh, some of this, I have um, a copy of Doctrines and Covenant, The Pearl of Great Price, uh, History of the Church, The Book of Mormon, um, but I I didn't put all of these in this video. I'm just using the file that I had used to print off for that senior pastor. Um, you can um, reference those materials though or even Google these uh, to confirm them. Now Joseph Smith was the founder of Mormonism and uh, possibly his most uh, famous sermon or speech is the King Follett Discourse. King Follett was a, a senior member of of uh, the church at the time and the discourse was given at his funeral by Joseph Smith and I'm going to read um, part of that to show um, the uh, polytheism and the uh, Arianism of Mormonism. President Joseph Smith delivered the following discourse before about 20,000 saints at the April Conference of the Church, 1844, being the funeral sermon of Elder King, uh, King Follett. Reported by Willard Richards, Wilford uh, Woodruff, Thomas Bullock, and William Clayton. This discourse was first published in the Times and Seasons of August 15, 1844. I will go back to the beginning before the world... W oh, I'm sorry, this is the beginning of the sermon. I will go back... Uh, to the beginning before the world was, to show what kind of a being God is. What sort of a being was God in the beginning? Open your ears and hear, all ye ends of the earth, for I am going, <clears throat> I'm going to prove it to you by the Bible and tell you the designs of God in relation to the human race and why he interferes with the affairs of man. God himself 
was once as we are now, and is an exalted man, and sits enthroned in yonder heavens. That is the great secret. If the veil were not rent today, and the great God who holds this world in its orbit, and who upholds all worlds and all things by his power, was to make himself visible, I say if you were to see him today, you would see him like a man in form, like yourselves, and all the person and image in very form as a man. For Adam was created in the very fashion, image, and likeness of God, and received instruction from, and walked, and talked, and conversed with him, as one man talks and communes with another. In order to understand the subject of the dead, for consolation of those who mourn for the loss of their friends, it is necessary we should understand the character and being of God, and how he came to be so. For I am going to tell you how God came to be God. We have imagined and supposed that God was God from all eternity. I will refute that idea and take away the veil so that you may see. These are, the incomprehensible, uh, these are incomprehensible ideas to some, but they are simple. It is the first principle of the gospel to know for certainty the character of God and to know that we may converse with him as one man converses with another and that he was once a man like us. Yea, that God himself, the father of us all, dwell on an earth, the same as Jesus Christ himself did, and I will show it from the Bible. Okay, so that's the, that's the gist of the King Follett discourse. And in that, you can clearly see that uh, Mormonism um, has a completely different God than Judaism and Christianity because it's teaching that God was first a man. And um, I have some in here from um, Brigham Young as well that will go a little further than that as well. So, examples of Mormonism's polytheism in canonized scripture uh, to the Mormon church. The Book of Abraham, chapter 4. The gods plan the creation of the earth and all life thereon. Their plans for the six days of creation are set forth. Verse 1. And then the Lord said, Let us go down. And they went down at the beginning. And they, that is the gods, organized and formed the heavens and the earth. Verse 2. And the earth after it was formed after it was formed, was empty and desolate, because they had not uh, formed anything but the earth, and darkness reigned upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of the gods was brooding upon the face of the waters. Verse 3, And they, the gods, said, Let there be light, and there was light. So here in the, um, in the book of Abraham, in the fourth chapter, in verses 1 through 3, we see polytheism, not monotheism, not Elohim, who is the one God who has plurality within his person, within his being, and three people who are the one God. This is teaching three different, I mean, this is teaching uh, different gods, and these are all gods who were first men who progressed uh, to being God. Um, here we'll look at Brigham Young explains polytheism of Mormonism. How many gods how many gods there are, I do not know. But there never was a time when there were not gods and worlds, and when men were not passing through the same ordeals that we are now uh, passing through. That course has been from all eternity, and it is and will be to all eternity. You cannot comprehend this, but when you can, it will be to you a matter of great consolation. Journal of Discourses 7333, Brigham Young, Second President of the Church. So here with Brigham Young, we see clearly that they believe in the absurdity of infinite regression. Now, in this section, this is to reveal that Judaism is um, monotheistic, but also this is simple, a simple way um, in dealing with Mormons to show them that they can't be Christian because they are polytheistic. And with these passages of Scripture, if you just take them to these passages, you can show them that, look, Judaism, of which Christianity is a fulfillment of, is monotheistic. So Judaism is monotheistic. Deuteronomy 4.35, You were shown these things so that you might know that the Lord is God. Besides Him, there is no other. Deuteronomy 4.39, Acknowledge and take to heart this day that the Lord is God in heaven. 
above and on the earth below. There is no other. Deuteronomy 32.39 See now that I myself am he. There is no God besides me. 2 Samuel 7.22 uh, Chapter 7 verse 22 How great you are, sovereign Lord. There is no one like you, and there is no God but you, as we have heard from our own ears. With our own ears. Um, here we go. Um, uh, First Chronicles seventeen twenty. There is no one like you, Lord, and there is no God but you, as we have heard with our own ears. Isaiah thirty seven twenty. Uh, you are my witnesses, uh, declares the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, so that you may know and believe me and understand that I am He. Before me, no God was formed, nor will there be one after me. This passage is special in telling us that there was never a God before Yahweh and that there will uh, not be another after him, which means that Mormons cannot become gods and that eternal progression doesn't exist. Isaiah 44, 6, This is what the Lord says, Israel's King and Redeemer, the Lord Almighty, I am the first and I am the last. Apart from me there is no God. Isaiah 44, 8. Do not tremble, do not be afraid. Did I not proclaim this and foretell it long ago? You are my witnesses. Is there any God besides me? No, there is no other rock. I know not one. Isaiah 45, 5. I am the Lord and there is no other. Apart from me there is no God. I will strengthen you, though you have not acknowledged me. Isaiah 45, 14. This is what the Lord says, The products of Egypt and the merchandise of Cush and those <clears throat> tall Sabians, they will come over to you and will be yours. They will trudge behind you, coming over to you in chains. They will bow down before you and plead with you, saying, Surely God is with you and there is no other. There is no other God. Isaiah forty-five, twenty-one, Declare what is to be uh, present. Present it. Declare what is to be. Present it. Let them take counsel together. Who foretold this long ago? Who declared it from the distant past? Was it not I, the Lord? And there is no God apart from me. A righteous God and a Savior, there is none but me. Isaiah 46, 9. Remember the former things, those of long ago. I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is no, there is none like me. So, in these Old Testament passages, we see clearly that Judaism is uh, monotheistic. It is not polytheistic. And so here, we're, what we're going to look at is uh, Christianity is a fulfillment of Judaism, and it is monotheistic. These are passages from the New Testament. John seventeen three. This is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God. Uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 8, 4 through 7. So then about eating food sacrificed to idols, we know that an idol, that an idol is nothing at all in the world and that there is no God but one. For even if there are so-called gods, whether in heaven or on earth, as indeed there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is but one God, the Father, from whom all things came and for whom we live. And there is but one Lord Jesus Christ through whom all things came and through whom all through whom we live. Ephesians four four through six. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called <clears throat> to one hope when you were when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. First Timothy one seventeen. Now to the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. So in these um, uh, four areas of Scripture, we can clearly see that Christianity is monotheistic. Okay, and. Uh, 
I'm adding this in here if you're witnessing to Mormons. Um, it'd be good to add this in. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ in 12 scriptures as I know it from the Bible. 1 Corinthians 1.18 for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved it is the power of God. 1 Corinthians 1, 22-24 Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1-8 through now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel you are saved, if you hold firmly to the word I preached to you. Otherwise you have believed in vain. For what I received I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the Scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas and then to the Twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, and then to all of the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to me also, as to one abnormally born. Uh, Abraham was saved by a relationship with God that grew into good works, allowing the world to see his faith glorifying God. Works are not required for salvation, they result from it. Romans 4, verses 1 through 5. Abraham was justified before God by faith, righteous without works. God saw Abraham's faith in his heart without works. James 2, 14 through 24. Abraham was justified before people by works. The world could not see Abraham's faith until he raised the knife over Isaac. So... In uh, Romans chapter 4, Abraham's justified before God by faith alone, without works. In James chapter 2, verses 14 through 24, Abraham's justified before the world by works. Since people cannot see other people's hearts, uh, they see other people's faith by their works. But these works do not save a person, they are the result of being saved. They are part of salvation. Salvation is not the result of works. Good works are the result of salvation. Because if we look at James uh, chapter 2, verse 10, um, right before verse uh, 14, if we go to verse 10, uh, James makes it clear that whoever um, would try to fulfill the law but would stumble over even a small portion of the law and broke uh, just one single law breaks the entire law there is no salvation by works good works are a result of the law of Christ of the Holy Spirit indwelling a person Ephesians 2 8 and 9 for it is by grace you have been saved through faith and this is not from yourselves it is the gift of God not by works, so that no one can boast Romans 11.6, And if by grace, then it cannot be based on works. If it were, grace would no longer be grace. So, we are saved by works, the works of Christ, and the works of Christ alone. If we attempt to add anything to the cross, we nullify it, and by doing that, uh, leave ourselves condemned under the wrath of the law of God, the law of Moses. Even the faith with which we believe is not from ourselves. It comes from the cross of Christ. It, uh, we see clearly in Romans 11.6 that grace and works cannot be mixed and remain what they are. So we cannot by merit gain salvation or favor with God. God gives without favor or partiality to whom he will. He has mercy on whom he will have mercy. Um, we, we merely have the choice before us to uh, acknowledge the sacrifice that God has given us in Christ Jesus so that we may be saved from the condemnation of the law, which is the righteousness of God. And so here we clearly see this is sufficient enough to present to Mormons to show them that they are polytheists, that, that Judaism is monotheistic, 
and that Christianity is monotheistic and that therefore they cannot be Christian. Also, we see that <clears throat> uh, they are Arians as well because in this belief system, Jesus Christ is not God Almighty. He is merely mm, a man who is progressing uh, to Godhood. So it's... Um, there's actually a, a line, a statement in Doctrines and Covenants that as man is, God once was, as God is, man may become. But it it's the doctrine of eternal progression. And it it necessarily denies the deity of Christ. In fact, if it's further examined, the belief of um, Mormonism is that everyone exists as a spirit child bef before they uh, are born on earth. And uh, Jesus is the oldest of our siblings uh, from the God Elohim. Because heaven for uh, Mormons parallels heaven for Muslims, which is a sexual heaven um, where a man who has progressed to godhood will have... I don't know if it's infinite sexual relations with his wife that he calls to, he has to call her by name to raise her and then produce uh, sexually spirit children. And those children are given um, flesh and bone um, and put on a planet over which that man has become a god uh, in order to be given a chance to progress to godhood themselves. And... It therefore it denies completely the the person of the God of of the Bible. It denies the person of the Father, the person of the Son, and the person of the Holy Spirit. It it does not in any way align with um, the revelation of Scripture, and uh, in many many places does the um, Book of Mormon disagree with the Bible. Though Mormons will attempt to convince you that they are in full agreement when they are not. Joseph Smith also made the statement, published statement, that the Book of Mormon is the most correct book on earth, when in truth it's actually one of the most corrected books on earth. It was filled with so many errors. Um, sadly, uh, Mormons are sincere people absolutely sincere uh, for you who are Christians that are watching this please let your heart break for them I mean Mormons even give their lives as missionaries and uh, they die for this and um, I wish sincerity was a measure of the truth or that persecution was as well because uh, Mormons were heavily persecuted, and even to this day, there it's legal to kill Mormons under the law in the state of Missouri. Um, persecution doesn't always mean truth. Sometimes it's a sign of deception. You know, we can be persecuted for following something that isn't true.